no matter how many YouTube videos, Instagram reels, or articles by sports scientists and high-level physique athletes come out, some muscle growth myths just refuse to die. Today, we're breaking down five of the most stubborn bro science myths around muscle growth that continue to linger despite the evidence. Let's get to it. Starting off with the mind-muscle connection. Now, this myth suggests that by intensely focused on the muscle you're working, like visualizing your biceps contracting during curls, you can significantly boost muscle growth, or at least that it is a super important variable of training for muscle growth. Mind-muscle connection is a popular concept, especially in bodybuilding circles, where the idea is that feeling the muscle work leads to better hypertrophy outcomes. But what does the science really say? Research at the moment shows that while the mind-muscle connection might have some benefits for experienced lifters, its overall impact on muscle growth is minimal compared to factors like training intensity or training volume. Consistently training hard and performing enough training volume are the things that matter for muscle growth, not necessarily the focus you place on the muscle being worked. Studies indicate that for advanced lifters who have already a good grasp on their form and overall technique, being a bit more conscious about engaging a specific muscle group during training can lead to greater muscle activation in that group. However, muscle activation in itself is not necessarily a great predictor of muscle growth. And we've seen that over and over with the current literature where sometimes greater activation did not actually predict greater hypertrophy. The issue with overly focused on the mind-muscle connection, especially for beginner or intermediate lifters, is that it can actually detract from what's important. Proper technique, and we've talked about this way too much on this channel, but more specifically, pushing yourself hard over time and actually training very close to failure. Feeling the muscle and specifically focusing on that, it can make things feel slower than they really are sometimes. And if you're then also thinking of just like the pump and, oh, okay, I felt my bicep really much and I got a bit of a burn and calling your set when you feel some form of fatigue or a burn can actually lead to you making much less gains than if you just focused on taking that set to failure. If your form is good, and you're taking a specific muscle group or just even if you're doing an isolation or a compound exercise, if you take that set to failure, it is extremely unlikely that the muscles that the exercise is targeting are not sufficiently stimulated, even if you're not necessarily feeling them a whole lot per se. Next up is the myth that you must do free weight exercises to optimize muscle growth. The argument here is that free weights like barbell squats, deadlifts, and bench presses are superior because they require more stabilization and they're considered more functional. Additionally, you may have also heard that, oh, they will release more growth hormone or testosterone or whatever. However, recent scientific evidence shows that this claim is outdated. When we look at the research comparing free weights and machines, we see that both can be equally effective for building muscle size, strength, as well as power. When studies directly compare groups using free weights versus machines, they do not find any significant differences in muscle growth outcomes, provided that the total training volume and intensity of effort are similar. When it comes to strength, and I know we're talking about muscle growth, if you want to get better at barbell squatting, doing the barbell squat, is likely best if you are looking to get better at leg pressing, leg pressing is best, but they will both have some form of transfer to one another, although suboptimal if you specifically want to get stronger in a specific movement. But if your goal is muscle growth, using machines can be just as effective as free weights. Machines can help you target specific muscles more precisely, potentially reduce the risk of injury or at least remove some of the overthinking and technical learning that is required with some exercises, as well as providing a bit more stability and overall control. Take, for example, a barbell row versus a chest-supported machine row. With the latter, for some people, 
you may be able to focus on your back a bit more, use less hip drive, and just simply keep things a bit more strict while prioritizing things like emphasizing long muscle lengths, having some eccentric control, and so on and so forth. Not that a free weight exercise is bad because of stability and what other BS, but machines should not be viewed as inferior simply because of some mumbo jumbo that we're used to hearing. So rather than viewing free weights uh, as a must, think of them as just another tool in your training toolkit. Incorporating both free weights and machines in your program will likely offer plenty of variety, prevent overuse injuries, and help you consistently progress. The most important thing is that you're training consistently and pushing your train hard to so take everything with a pinch of salt. It doesn't really matter whether you use only free weights or machines, although it's likely best to use both. And you know how you can use both in a very easy way without thinking about actually any of this bullshit that I'm telling you right now? Myodap, yes, another shameless ad. Check out Myodap. Another myth that is unfortunately a myth because I would love for it to be true is that gaining muscle will turn you into a calorie burning machine. Ah, <sighs> if only that were true. Now, the idea that gaining muscle will turn you into a calorie burning machine is a myth that suggests that because the muscle tissue is more metabolically active than fat, gaining muscle will drastically increase your basal metabolic rate, making it much easier to lose fat and stay lean. While it's true that muscle does burn more calories than fat at rest, the difference is not as significant or as extreme as people think. Muscle tissue burns roughly somewhere around 13 calories per kilogram per day, while fat burns about 4.5 calories per kilogram per day. So if you were to gain about 11 pounds of muscle, so five kilograms, you'd be burning like an extra 60, 65 calories per day, AKA a medium apple. That's not really the metabolic furnace or whatever effect people imagine. Moreover, any initial increase in metabolism that comes with gaining muscle may plateau over time as your body adjusts to the new muscle mass and the increase in calorie expenditure will become less dramatic. While having more muscle certainly helps in maintaining a healthy weight uh, over time, it is not going to all of a sudden allow you to eat as much as you want. The true benefits of building muscle go beyond your metabolism and muscle mass improves your strength, functional capacity, bone density, insulin sensitivity, and overall health. So although gaining muscle for these reasons is great, gaining muscle is not a silver bullet for fat loss. You still need to pay attention to your diet, even if you're an extremely muscular individual, and if you get into strength training with the idea that eventually you won't have to care about what you eat, simply because you'll gain all this muscle and burn a ton of extra calories. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Next up is the idea that doing cardio will ruin your gains. That cardio specifically is a bad thing for muscle growth. This idea comes from the belief that doing any form of cardio will interfere with the muscle building effects that resistance training produces, leading to either muscle loss or at the very least slowing down your progress. But what does the actual science have to say about the interference effect? The reality is that cardio doesn't necessarily kill your gains if done correctly. Studies that have looked at the effects of combining resistance training with cardio, also known as concurrent training, have found that the impact of cardio on muscle growth depends largely on the type, intensity, frequency, and timing of the cardio performed. For example, high impact cardio like long distance running has been shown to slightly impair growth in type one muscle fibers, which are the smaller endurance oriented fibers. However, this does not significantly affect overall muscle size or strength particularly if running is done at a moderate intensity and duration. Low impact cardio, such as cycling, has been found to have minimal to no negative effect on muscle hypertrophy. In fact, for many people, combining cardio with strength training can actually have complementary benefits. For example, moderate intensity cardio can improve cardiovascular health, improve, increase blood flow and aid in muscle recovery, which can potentially enhance your ability to perform more resistance training sessions, recover better, and it can also allow you to be healthier. A healthier you is likely going to be a better you in the gym and 
that can potentially lead to more gains. Now, I'm not gonna sell you cardio for muscle gains, but the boogeyman of the interference effect is real. Even if you decide to go for a run every day, as long as you're doing your due diligence with your resistance training sessions, and you are also eating and sleeping appropriately, it's likely that you're not leaving many gains on the table. The key is to avoid excessive cardio, particularly at high intensities or extremely long durations, which can potentially have some interference effect with muscle growth. Instead, keep your cardio sessions moderate in length, like 20 to 40 minutes and frequency, and think of cardio as a tool to enhance your overall fitness rather than something that takes away from your muscle building goals. Also, remember that specifically planning your cardio away from your resistance training, either on separate days or a bunch of hours separately, ideally after, is probably best. So overall, do not be afraid of cardio. Just do not take the absolute piss. Last but not least, Deloads are necessary and will accelerate muscle growth. The idea behind a deload is that taking a plant week off or significantly reducing training volume and intensity will allow your body to recover from accumulated fatigue, reset your muscles, and lead to faster growth once you resume normal training. But contrary to popular belief, the current scientific evidence suggests that deloads might not be a muscle building hack and actually might just help you rest and alleviate fatigue. The first ever study to directly examine the effects of deloading on muscle growth and strength actually found that taking a week off in the middle of an eight week training cycle did not result in greater or less muscle hypertrophy compared to those who trained continuously. In fact, while deloads did not harm muscle size, as I just mentioned, they also did not provide any unique benefits for muscle growth. When it comes to your training overall, you can confidently push your training for as long as you can until you see your performance drop off massively for a period of a few weeks. You don't necessarily need to worry about pre-planned deloads or the fact that you need to have deloads in there in order to further accelerate muscle growth and resensitize your muscles or whatever. The practical takeaway here is that deloads still have their place in your training, but not for the reasons many people think. Deloads are useful for managing fatigue, preventing overtraining, and give your body a break. Other than that, do not overthink deloads and do not force them if you don't need to, because if you're taking a week off or a lower volume week every few days, you may be actually leaving gains on the table. But you know what's not a myth? Myoadapt.com, AKA Myoadapt, our up and coming training app that will literally coach you and will take all of these myths in consideration to ensure that you're making the best gains possible by implementing the latest science when it comes to muscle growth. So sign up on myadapt.com, express your interest to be the first to be notified about our app. It is literally going to be the most versatile app that the market has ever seen as it pertains to muscle growth apps. No pre-made programs, any sort of program that you can think of, the app can generate it weekly adjustments, and more importantly, long-term updates based on the latest science. Deloads all of a sudden, after 10 years of research, become super important and can actually, they're actually proven to resensitize muscle growth. The app will be informed about it and it will take into consideration. Oh, what's that? Mind-muscle connection is suddenly the most important thing for muscle growth. Guess what? MyAdapt will know about it and will implement it. So, Instead of downloading sheets on sheets or apps that essentially give you pre-made uh, training templates that you have to adjust yourself or are just fancy workout trackers, sign up, myadapt.com, express interest. It will be a free trial anyways. Try the app for seven days. If you don't like it, don't use it, don't pay for it. But if you do like it, it can save you a ton of money from online coaching and other BS apps and will be available for both Apple and Android devices so that you can have it on your favorite device, which I hope is an iPhone. I'm talking to you, Android people. Now, back to the video. AK, we're done with the video. Rascalapparel.com, ads on ads, baby. We've sold out here, but what can you do? We gotta make a living out there. A lot of cool projects are coming. We have to have the necessary funds in order to support those. But joking aside, code Dr. Pack for 10% off. Thank you so much for watching.
rascalapparel.com, rascalapparel.eu, but more importantly, myadapt.com. Shamelessly plugging. I'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>